eyes aren't built to see very well in the dark or underwater. So we wouldn't be much good in the depths of the ocean. Without specialist equipment, we'd never be able to go and see what lives there. But good news, Te Papa has found a way to bring the creatures of the deep sea to us. With a grant from the Royal Society Marsden Fund, researchers from Massey University, the University of Western Australia and Te Papa are using video to investigate the diversity of sea life at different depths and latitudes. We are dropping camera systems um, underwater at depth ranging from 50 meters till beyond a thousand meter depth, which is where it starts being very interesting. Each system has not one, but two cameras, so they can record in stereo, giving the scientists a much more detailed view. We can measure everything in the field of view um, after the voyage. We can know the length of this fish, we can know at which distance it is from the footage, which is very nice. One of those frames, and they weigh about 120 kg. It's going quite quick, quickly to the bottom. To reach the 900 meters depth, it takes about six minutes. And you will see that going deeper and deeper, less and less light. That's why we absolutely need some sort of light to observe our fish. We do not want to disturb the, the fish down there. We just want to attract, the, attract them by the bait, but not attracting them or deterring them with the light. And apparently, many fish will not see the blue light. So that's why we are not using anything else. We are at 900 meters depth here, and you can see there is a king crab at the bait. And here is a little friend arriving, which is a sand tiger shark of a very decent size. Those sharks are quite rare, and it's indeed, we believe it's the first time it, it's is seen so deep. Usually they are found as deep as 500 meters, but so here we are at 900 meters. They have quite a bad reputation, but apparently they are quite peaceful sharks. We can sometimes find them in aquariums. Hagfish look a bit like eels, but they're much slimier. If you catch one, it can ooze a bucket of slime in minutes. Through the videos, we can see that same defense mechanism working in the wild. So here there is a, a series of hagfish and a, a ling trying to go for the bait, but I think that this ling is realizing, well, why not going for a hagfish? And, that's what uh, he's trying here, but you can see he doesn't like it at all because, yeah, he's probably choking because of the, of the slime that those hagfish have been producing. It's the kind of thing that we hypothesized was why hagfish are producing the slime, but seeing live on the footage is something else than just imaging it. As well as the footage, the team collects hagfish for further investigation in the lab. So that's very primitive fish, but very well adapted uh, in the deep sea because they are very, very abundant. And um, this is the proof. Is this, this a whole pile of them here? Yeah, it's a whole pile of hagfish which haven't been cleaned yet. They are still full of slime. Where does the slime come from? Well, here you can see on this specimen that there are many, many pores from which the slime is uh, secreted. Mm. On a species like those, you will count about 80 pores. During our last uh, trip, we have been collecting over 400 of those specimens. And the number of pores we had to count to identify them is something above 33,000. 33,000 pores to be counted. When you, you put them in the, in the plastic bag and freeze them, they are still producing this mucus. So when we will have to process them to be able to count all the pores, they have to be cleaned. After eight hard days at sea, Vincent and his colleagues are keen to see dry land, but there are plenty of chances to relive the trip. Between sea voyages, Vincent spends months analysing the footage and specimens they've captured. Plenty of amazing discoveries have already been made, but who knows what's to come out of the ocean depths next time.